Hi, this is Pat Duckworth, the author of the number one international best-selling book, Hot Women Rock, How to Discover Your Midlife Entrepreneurial Mojo. And I just enjoy talking to other entrepreneurs so much that I've been seeking out all these wonderful entrepreneurs so I can talk to them and keep learning. As an entrepreneur, you have to keep learning and evolving. And we're going to find out more about that today. So my guest today is an audience growth and fan engagement social media consultant and trainer. She shows entrepreneurs, coaches, and health practitioners how to sell their books, their programs, and their services. She's a creator of the Social Media Quick Start Program, and she shows you how to a slight shift in the way content is presented can accelerate audience growth and invite extraordinary fan engagement resulting in more sales. Who doesn't want that? So joining me today is Catherine Sakali stevens Hi, Catherine. Hello, Pat. How are you? I'm doing good, thank you. And you're in Calgary? I'm in Calgary, covered in snow, beautiful snow. Driving is going to be lovely. <laughs> well, I don't want to upset you, but spring has sprung here. And uh, so we've got daffodils and crocuses. And uh, I went out for a walk earlier and all the beautiful plants are coming up. But you've got that to look forward to. It's coming. <laughs> so, Catherine, um, you started out in IT. Now, I don't want to give away your age. You're definitely one of my <laughs> younger hot women. <laughs> <laughs> but back when the internet and IT um, were in What's the new? earliest stages. It was in the earliest stage. I actually had one of Canada's first websites. Oh, wow. And it was all about, it was a joke at the time. It was all about the health benefits of kale. Uh, sorry, kelp. <laughs> kelp and, and silliness with kelp. And, you know, we had gray screens and 16 colors to choose from at the time. So it was, so a, it was an easier time. So you had your first website. Were you working for yourself at that time or were you in an organization? I was uh, just about to work for the government of Canada. At the time, they were called Energy Mines and Resources and I was doing um, work with uh, their was Canada's first radar sat satellite. So it was a very specific pixel per meter. Uh, it was a beautiful time to be working in that industry. And then what happened from there? How did your career develop from there? Well, because I was uh, I came from from coding and computers and created websites and at the time, it was very much C++ programming. I ended up uh, moving with my ex to Los Angeles. And there was a, um, a space for a teaching or a training school. So you know these Adobe products today, of, of Photoshop, and you've heard of Flash, although you may not have seen too much of it of late. But I used to teach that uh, from a code level and the application level. In these groups, people would fly into Los Angeles, take a week's training, fly home and get to work on their projects. Wow. So what yeah. happened from there? I came to Calgary and Los Angeles is a networking town. Yeah. Calgary is a networking town. So I was able to use some of the skills I had learned in, uh, in Los Angeles, in Calgary, and networked for two solid years because I didn't know anybody here. And I would be just invited to all these different events. And I ended up working with a company who, um, you know, the internet changes and the websites change. And it went from coding to almost like box coding, what we've seen in applications like WordPress. It's not straight coding. You can certainly add coding to areas, but most people are doing the drag and drop or they're doing the plug and play. Mm -hmm. And I started doing the marketing side of that because I could talk to both the client and I could speak to the programmers, the, the big ones in the background, and I was able to translate the messages back and forth that would often be misunderstood. So were you doing this for yourself by this stage, or are you still working for somebody else? At the time, I was working for someone else, but it was very much a sales position within a company, and ended up leaving that because I found that social media was starting. I had a MySpace account, like a lot of other people, watched it, disintegrate because it just didn't keep up. Facebook was rising and someone in the business industry convinced me that you could use Facebook for business. And once I jumped on board, because it was fun to, to 
keep in contact with people. But when you're looking at your social media from a business point of view, when Facebook alone was around and you watch all these new social media platforms come up and then applications and great websites, there's so much that can be done and it's all happening at a faster and faster rate. I was set. <laughs> social media, it is. <laughs> so that's when you branched out to do this on your own? Yes. And yeah. were you using, so those networks that you've built up, was that mainly face-to-face -face at that stage? Most of it was face-to-face -face or it started out face-to-face -face and it was by email in the early days because I, I kept in contact with a lot of those people. And then um, it, now I've been back in Calgary now for 10 years. I can't believe it's been 10 years. And the people that I was networking with for two solid years there, Calgary had a bust. I don't know if you're aware of that. Calgary was in a boom when I got here. It had a bust. Mm -hmm. I also happened to be ill around the same time. So there was a two-year span where I really wasn't going out and meeting people, certainly not at the level that I was. Mm -hmm. And when I did start going out again, when I was ready, in the last two years, I've really changed my business and going out and networking again, I would run into so many people that I knew from back then Many people have changed. Some stayed in the same businesses and really got specific and started to specialize. And I decided to do that too. I didn't want to do all social media. I wanted to focus in on the relationship building because we can do that face-to-face -face networking, but there is a way to do that online with people you've never met. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But that whole thing of meeting up with people you know, it's that balance, isn't it, between actually seeing people face to face and mm -hmm. what you do online. You kind of need a mix there somewhere. And there are ways of doing it now. Let's <gasps> <Sure, I> talk <thought laughs> more about it. So what, was, what was it that tipped you into becoming an entrepreneur? Uh, you know, I Calgary at the time that I got here, it's like coming, it was like coming to the West during the gold rush or yeah. the North, the Northwest during the gold rush. That's honestly what I came to when I came to Calgary. There was so much money being made and this is an oil and gas town, but it's also, people don't realize it's a technology town. It's an agriculture town. The technology, the, the, we saw the startups and aging myself again, the dot coms come and go. And then there was this new technology growth here. People were reaching out and building their own businesses. Some of them were working and then doing it on the side. Some people left their jobs and were doing it. I came to Calgary without a job. I had a little time. I wanted to change what I was doing. So I, I, I'm afraid I jumped in on the bandwagon completely green. And it did take me years to figure out what I'm doing. But I'm there now. And what was, what's your passion in all of this? What, what really lights you up? Ah, uh, when you go out into a crowd and they say that this is the difference between an extrovert and an introvert, the introvert loses energy. It takes energy from them to do, to do that engagement face to face. Then you have the extrovert that just seems like the energizer bunny has put a stronger and stronger battery in. <laughs> That's me. Face to face. I love going out and talking to people. I love finding out what they're doing now or what... I love finding out people's tips of the week. I know that sounds crazy, but I used to ask that even years ago. It's like, what amazing thing have you learned? Who have you spoken to? What, what's new? What's happening that's different? Because people are either glowing or they're a little disappointed, but it's just a learning experience to get them back to glowing again. Yeah. And I would find that if you phrase questions a certain way, you can get people to talk online. You can bring people from an online conversation to a face-to-face -face conversation. What we're doing right now, there's a few miles between us, <laughs> but this is a different level of conversation than if we had done it over the phone, if we had done it through email, or if we had done it through Facebook Messenger. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And certainly, I mean, you know, we're both members of the Evolutionary Business Council, yes. uh, which was sort of founded in Calgary and now has members worldwide. And a lot of people I've met through that in North America and Canada and even now in Australia, and you make a connection with them in this way over Skype or Zoom or whatever, 
it's augmented when you meet them face to face face to face and the conferences honestly conferences and traveling even for fun yeah. meeting up with people is amazing now there's the odd time people aren't quite what you expected and how fun is that when you get to find out it's almost like a blind date i'm gonna meet my blind friend yeah. <laughs> And you go and you meet and you discover that you have even more in common. And when you take that face to face back, you just have that extra layer. And now you've got more stories because you can build more in a shorter period of time yeah. when you are face to face. And yeah. conferences are the most amazing places to do that. So even finding people you've never met before, finding out what conferences are thinking of going to in a year or next year can't go more than once every two years that's fine too yeah. see if you can get a small group together and don't forget to have that little bit of alone time so that you can all bond either as a group or your one-on-one -on -one at these conferences so you need to do the whole you need to do the the minimum you need to really bond with a couple of people especially the ones that you've really connected with online absolutely so we won't give any secrets away that we have been roommates <laughs> And that's you yeah. get to know your roommate. <laughs> Detroit. Detroit, Detroit, baby. <laughs> so this is Pat Duckworth, the author of Hot Women Rock, How to Discover Your Midlife Entrepreneurial Mojo, talking today to Catherine Sakaley Stevens. So Catherine, I'm hearing a lot in what you're talking about in this level of your the resources and capabilities that you've built up. Firstly, in you know understanding the nuts and bolts of IT and then this kind of continuous evolving that goes on with social media how do you keep developing those capabilities you know what a big part of it was realizing I can't do it all mm. and at one point you have websites and marketing and social media. You can't do it all, so you specialize. You choose one of the three. And I chose social media. Social media is massive. And then you have, you know, whether you're, it's just, are you looking to launch? Are you looking to engage? Are you looking to spread yourself so that you get reach? Are you looking to make an announcement or a message to take it farther? All of those are specialties now. And I've chosen fan engagement. What that means is that you need to have good communication with those that are specializing with you. Mm -hmm. So my resource is being so clear in what I can do that when one of these referral partners or, or search partners, if you will, will call me up, I can give them great advice but they can give me great advice as well. So a resource, it can always be, I've, I've got white papers and tableaus and, and articles that I'm always keeping abreast on, but also knowledgeable people who get who you are and what you're doing and who want to do the same so that you can come to each other. Because if you're researching, you're only thinking in your headspace. When they're explaining or teaching you, you get to see the full picture. Mm. And it's amazing. Yeah. And how about the, the skills to be an entrepreneur? I mean, what have you have to learn? Because that's all your technical skill. How yes. about all that entrepreneurial skill? How have you taken that on board? You remember I said I was extremely green at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Made every mistake you can possibly make as an entrepreneur. I've probably done them all. And honestly, coaching mm. programs, online programs, face-to-face -face programs, I'm in an industry that's ever changing. Coaching is also changing because there are so many different options of coaching and, and whatnot. And I don't know what I don't know. And that's a really dangerous place to be in. Therefore I seek out coaches and I invest in myself and my company so that I can be more helpful to more people because I'm filling the areas that I'm not even aware of that I'm, that I'm making mistakes in. Yeah. That investment in yourself is just so important, isn't it? It is. It yeah. is. And it might feel like, oh, I don't have it. I can't do it. But you have to do it because you're going to be better. And you're thinking small term. I can't do it now. You have to think projection. And, you know, with the EBC, we were talking about the Evolutionary Business Council. We have two retreats a year. And I've actually decided to measure my success based on those two retreats. Mm -hmm. So in the last six months, what have I accomplished? What did I, you know, what could have I done better? What can I improve on? What is rocking? I'm going to rinse and repeat. Yeah. So that is, it's a good measurement of time. 
Do you know what really came over to me from the last uh, conference, which, you know, was only a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. a recurring theme for me that came out of it was about service. How can I serve my clients, my customers more? Was there any particular word that came out to you from it? Ah, you know what? The word extraordinary came out for okay. me. And I, you know, I used it with extraordinary fan engagement, but the way I see it, every individual has something extraordinary to bring to the table. So instead of bringing some content, bring extraordinary content. Mm -hmm. the, um, when it comes specifically to selling, and uh, I just heard this term yesterday, compel, don't sell. Oh. Be compelling. Make your content compelling. And that means focusing on a very small, um, or, or narrowing anyway, your audience from everybody to these people that would be most likely to buy from you. And when you have your compelling content, you're serving them. You're not hoping for a sale. Yeah. You're serving your clients. And the word of mouth, both face-to-face -face and online, is far richer when you're serving clients rather than selling to one. Yeah, fantastic. And it, so is that, if that was a, your top tip, would that be it? you know, think about what would be compelling about what you do. Absolutely. And don't forget, if you're going to write your compelling tip, make sure that your audience is going to hear it as compelling. What you think in all your knowledge and experience is compelling is going to be very different. And you have to use the words that your audience is looking for. So I go, I go into techno gabble I use acronyms and I need to be careful when I'm speaking to an audience. I'm using their pain point words because it's not my words. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. So Catherine, if, um, is there anything, any news that you want to tell us about what's coming up next for you? Well, it's launch time. <laughs> So next week, I am uh, starting a new webinar, The Five Barriers to Extraordinary Fan Engagement. Wow. What are the things that block you from getting that from your audience? Oh. And that's a free webinar I'm putting on starting Wednesday. They will be weekly for the next, I think, three months. So tell us the date. It starts on Wednesday. Um, uh, the live webinars are either Wednesday afternoon or Wednesday evening, and then there's a replay for, uh, I think, three days after each one. Fantastic. And, yeah, so, so if, jump on in. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can, um, if you send me that link, I will put it up on the Facebook page along with this recording uh, so that everybody who watches it will know how to find you and how to um, get jump on those webinars. Yes. <laughs> and if they just want to contact you or find out more about you, how can they do that? Uh, I live on Twitter. So if you want to contact me, mention, don't do a direct message, do a mention. So just uh, use my handle, which is Catherine Netweb. That's at sign Catherine Netweb on Twitter. Uh, people uh, in, in your circle are welcome to uh, contact me by email, which is Catherine at the networking web and that's Catherine with a C. <laughs> Excellent. So thank you so much, Catherine. It's just been such a delight talking to you thank and you. to everybody watching, keep watching out for more of these um, recordings, knowing that at some time I might even interview a man. I've got nothing against them. <laughs> and I know some really wonderful male entrepreneurs and I would just love to be talking to some of them too. So keep watching out and take care. Bye.